Hey guys, welcome back to the Emma in Costa Rica channel. I hope you're all doing very well. A few weeks ago, I put a questionnaire box into my Instagram story and I told you guys I was gonna do a little Q&A video answering those questions. So here we are today. We are going to be talking and responding to many of your questions. So let's get right into it. So the first question is, how has life changed since you decided to make your life outside of the US? First things first, if you know me well, I'm actually from Canada, but I guess if you're asking about lifestyle, it's very much similar from Canada to the US, so it's not really that big of a difference. My life has changed a lot in the sense where I have learned to value things a bit more. You know, things here are either very expensive or harder to come across, and they get damaged a lot easier too, just because of simple things such as the weather, right? So you learn to really appreciate and understand the value of things as well as money because money here is also not as easy to come across. When is my birthday? <laughs> my birthday is November 26th. It's coming up guys. If you want to send a gift, let me know. <laughs> Just kidding, you don't have to. But yeah, I turned 30 years old on November 26th. Hi, we're traveling to Manuel Antonio and staying at the Falls Resort and we want to find out a place for good seafood. So, there are a few. One that I know is very local is here. It used to be called Mar Luna and now it is called Oce Oceano, Oceano? Oceano Seafood, I believe. They have very good seafood. El Legarto is also a very good place for that. They have usually um, on the menu sort of like a special section that has squid with scallops chopped up and stuffed inside the squid. And it is really good. It comes with like a fresh roasted potato, roasted tomato, and it's about, what, less than 20 bucks, so recommended. Another place, if you guys have a car, would be to go to Langosta Feliz. And that's basically on the way to Dominical in Matapalo, technically. You can weigh it and it will show you there. It's about maybe 30 minutes driving, but it's definitely worth it. I love going there for the camarones con arroz, que rico. <laughs> Do I have Costa Rican residents? <sighs> okay guys, I'm gonna spill the beans. I do not have residency. However, I am applying for it. I don't know, maybe, I think some of you guys have caught wind of that so far. Uh, I have mentioned it a few times on my Patreon page. If you guys aren't aware of Patreon, you can keep up a little bit more with me. You can message me directly. There's a few different benefits of signing up to my Patreon if you want to do it. But yes, I am applying for residency and it has been very frustrating so far because Canada seems to just take forever to get a document to me. I don't know why, but anyways. I don't have residency yet. Hopefully in the next few years, I will have it. Do you actually live in Costa Rica or stay here during certain periods? Well, if you know, you will know that I do not leave Costa Rica unless I have to. I, I, li I live here permanently, definitely. Um, I basically have family here and everything now. Uh, I'm able to sustain myself here, so I have no reason to leave. So yes, I'm here indefinitely, except for, of course, until I have my residency, I have to ex exit every three months. So yeah. <laughs> great place for dinner with great entertainment show. Manuel Antonio, <laughs> they specified. <laughs> so, okay, my personal favorite, but this is just for food, right? For me personally, dinner, is gonna be Lagarto again. I, I love their food. But if you want dinner and a show, it really depends. Most places have live music and I kind of just stopped paying attention to that for the most part because, uh, I don't know, I got bored of it, I guess. Another place that might have live music would be the Si Como No restaurant. I think it's called Claro que sí, I believe. 
So I'm just going over the video now and I've realized that I really did not do a good job of suggesting good restaurants with live entertainment. So my best suggestion to you will be La Colina. This place has really great food. You can get pizzas, pastas, there's a whole variety of different foods to get and they have live music a few nights per week. Aside from my recommendations, if you are looking for live music and such things in restaurants, your best bet is to check it out on Facebook. You can literally just type in live music, Manuel Antonio, live music, and it should come up the different ads that people put out to advertise their bands playing at certain restaurants. What is your most embarrassing moment while being a content creator? Hmm, this is a tough one. I think my most embarrassing moment as a content creator is something that never got into the videos <laughs> because there was one day where I was very ill. My stomach was just not having it and I went to go and do surf lessons. Okay, so everything was going great until the very end. I literally finished the lesson. There's a part of the video of me, like the surfing lesson one, where I'm walking away. There's like a drone clip panning over the beach and me. And my camera guy, Ronald, he just stopped filming right in time because I ended up running back to the ocean and getting very sick into the ocean. And I'm honestly not sure if people filmed me or watched me or I have no idea. I didn't care. <laughs> I was so unwell. Um, yeah, I basically died that day. One thing that had always kind of felt embarrassing to me, even though I know it's not really an embarrassing thing, nor should it be, or should it ever have been, is how red my face used to get when I would go on hikes and, you know, videos that were a little bit more physically challenging. I used to get so embarrassed by how tomato-faced I became. And I mean, hey, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Yes, the videos are there, they're always gonna be there. But for me, it's great because I can always look back at them and be like, wow, I'm proud of me. This is actually a question from one of my close friends on Instagram that is a part of my Patreon membership team, my patrons. They know a little bit more than others. <laughs> so I will answer this question for you guys. It's kind of like a teaser for an upcoming video. How was your experience at the Nicaragua border? So a few weeks ago, I had to exit the country because Canada's taking forever to get me my documents. So I needed to exit the country in order to continue being legally welcome in Costa Rica. And I decided to go to Nicaragua. If some of you remember, I had a pretty bad experience in Panama some time back, and I have been flying to Guatemala ever since. And, or if not Canada, right? So this time I decided, you know what? It's too expensive to keep flying in and out. Let's just go for a two or three day trip to Nicaragua or around there. So. It was great. It was an incredible experience. Um, you'll see more in the video that I make for that specific thing and that trip. However, it was amazing. <laughs> they were very friendly. Uh, I've read that people need to take small change and all that. Not true, or at least in my case, it wasn't true. I didn't need to have small bills or anything. I went there, I was as pre prepared as I could be. And one thing that I was really freaked out about is that I couldn't find a printer or a shop to print my stuff because it was too late at night at that point. And I was gonna go to the border first thing the next morning. And Lo and behold, I didn't need to print any of the documents that I thought I needed to print. So I was a bit nervous about that, but aside from that, it was s smoother than butter. <laughs> and then we were gone road tripping for the rest of the time that we were up there. But stay tuned for that video, guys. Uh, I'll let you know when that's gonna come out. <laughs> what kind of content can I see on Patreon? Thank you for asking that. <laughs> so on Patreon, you will have access to behind the scenes videos that I make extra parts from full videos, uh, funny bloopers and stuff like that. I also have started writing blogs about my trips. 
it'll be like a day by day kind of thing with pictures and explanations and just a little more detail um, of what I can explain in words as compared to making a video about it or just extra details, you know? You also get access to my close friends on Instagram so you get to see more day to day stories and what's going on with me. Uh, you get access to private messaging, you can ask me whatever you want and I will give you priority to uh, whatever you need. I also am creating a Discord community. On my Discord, I have several different channels. Some are based on traveling around Costa Rica, some are about me and my team who work on the videos with me. We've got a whole bunch of different things there. We've got different interests, cooking, travel, etc. So you get access to that and be a part of the community. As I mentioned earlier, I'll have the link down below in the description. So please do take a look and see if that's something that you would be interested in. I'd love to have you a part of my community. Favorite thing about living in Costa Rica? Hmm, everything. <laughs> okay, in all reality, I think my favorite part is the, well, I personally am able to live a more free lifestyle here because of my work. I mean, probably at this point I'd be able to do the same thing in Canada, but I just feel here there's a little more freedom and relaxation. And I mean, I live, what, 10 to 15 minutes away from the beach. And I think just the way life is viewed is just very much different. It's a lot more relaxed. Um, people live day to day. There's no, we don't make plans. Like if you make a really solid plan, it's not, necessarily gonna happen um like it's very much go with the flow here or at least where i live in capos it might be a bit different in other areas like in the cities but where i live personally super relaxed five minutes away from the beach 10 minutes away from the rivers and mountains and farms and everyone's just more relaxed and willing to have fun i think i think that makes a huge part is that People just try to make the best of the situation that they're in. You know, you could be working six days a week, but they still somehow find a way to have fun with it and make their lives better. There's a million things I could go on about, but those are the top things. <laughs> Hi, where are you from? So as I mentioned earlier, I am from Canada, Toronto, Toronto, Canada. Have you lived in other cities slash provinces in Costa Rica besides Capos? No, I have not. Manuel Antonio slash Capos has always been my area to go to even for holidays. So I feel very much connected to being here. And I just, I know everyone and yeah, this is my home. So if I had to move somewhere else, I think I could do it pretty easily. I might feel a bit out of place, but that's kind of the same as moving anywhere. What cities have you not yet visited in Costa Rica? Woo, too many. <laughs> I still have a lot to go. I need to get over to the Caribbean side of the country. Um, Puerto Viejo, Limon, I would love to get to know it. There's also a few other areas more towards the south that I haven't really been to yet. I haven't been to I think I've been to Golfito, but I haven't actually like stayed there or anything. Basically what you have seen in videos are the places that I have been. <laughs> I love you, Grog. Favorite beach? Um, probably Manuel Antonio, Espedilla Norte, because it's easy for me to get to, it's beautiful. Out of a lot of the beaches that I've been to, even now that I've been to Guanacaste, which will be coming up in a new video. Uh, I still think Mount Antonio, like the public part of the beach is the best. It's big, it's comfortable. Uh, the water's not too bad for swimming, wavy on certain days, but it depends of course. And it's just beautiful, it's just plain beautiful. So yeah, I think it's still my favorite one. Favorite Costa Rican food? <laughs> I think arroz con camarones is one of my most favorite. Runner up would be, oh, in the POAS video, las tortillas aliñas. So good, so good. I think that's probably one of my favorite Costa Rican foods. How did you lose weight? You look great, girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, as I mentioned earlier, I have worked very hard on weight loss and yeah, 
it's been almost two years now since I started trying to kind of start doing exercise and eating better and I think it all started way back I don't know if you guys remember that video that I talked about my skin issue this skin issue and taking pills so I had to take those pills for almost four months and I couldn't drink any alcohol and I just decided okay well if I'm not gonna drink alcohol then I'm just gonna like go hard and do exercise all the time and eat really well just like really focus on what I'm putting into my body and the spots didn't completely go away by the time I finished the pills but I was just so over putting medication into my body in general and yeah I just had to stop taking the pills and you know I started drinking again slowly slowly a beer here and there and but I continued my exercise regime because I'd already gotten so into the idea of like, I want this. I just went to Maxi Pelli, I bought a bunch of weights and I just work out at home. And every, I work out about six days a week. On the seventh day, I walk to the beach and back. Another thing that's been really great is that every time I want to go to the beach or I have to go to the beach for a shoot or something like that, I walk. So I'm just trying to find ways that I can include exercise into my daily life by doing simple things. And in terms of eating, I just eat a lot of protein and try to cut back on, you know, high fatty foods. So I'm not eating things like empanadas all the time anymore. What would you change in Manuel Antonio and Capos if you were mayor and had absolute power? Well, <laughs> where do I start? One thing would be to put more sidewalks in. Second thing, would be to potentially fix the drainage issue that's happening in Capos every time it rains too hard. Third thing, hmm. Oh, it's so hard. Okay, the final thing would be maybe a little more control on the rental situation here. I find rental apartments are obnoxiously expensive here and people have absolute no respect to you know, create an actual livable space. I find a lot of people are not very good at that here, which is weird, but it's awful. Aside from that, kind of hard to say. I'd have to think about this one for a lot longer. <laughs> All right guys, so that is it for the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any other questions or anything that I didn't answer, you can just leave them down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them to my best ability. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to support me and watch future videos that I make. I have a few new ones coming out that I'm really excited to share with you guys, some places that I've never been before. Don't forget to check out that Patreon link if you are interested in having closer contact with me or being a part of my discord community or just being a part of my instagram close friends to see what i do on a day-to-day -day basis thanks so much guys and i will see you soon